Hey guys, welcome to Behind the Scenes. Sorry, there's a lot of tea going on here this week. <laughs> so welcome, you guys. Welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm Angela Wolf, and I have a really fun show planned for you today. So pop in, say hi. If you've never been with us before, the routine is you say hi, say where you're from. You never know. Your neighbor might be sewing next to you or fishing. It depends. <laughs> and also, uh, so many of you come each week, so it's nice to see you. And on Saturdays, I go back and read through all the comments, and I love seeing that you are here. So even if you watch it later, and for those of you that are watching on YouTube, hello. You might be a day later, but we're all still here. So welcome, you guys. I can hardly believe it. This is, uh, oh my gosh, less than two weeks till Christmas. I celebrate Christmas, and I'm terrible at Christmas shopping in advance. The only bonus to that is I get a lot of really good deals the day before. <laughs> so that's going to be my routine. But sorry for the crackly voice. If you're in our private group, you know that Wynn came down with the flu last week. I think he came down with it while he was watching our show. I was watching him over there just kind of fade, not cold sweats, you know, all that. Well, he ended up with a terrible, terrible fever, uh, scary fever, actually. And I have not gotten the full-blown flu, but I'm still not quite mended yet. So I apologize if I start coughing. I know it's the most annoying thing, but I just can't control it. But I have my tea. Julie, I'm using your cup today, my Santa cup. I've got my squirrel, and I've got my tea in here. And I have to tell you guys, you are so reliable. I asked you what to use for the flu, and you guys gave me a whole list of stuff. I think I bought everything on the list, and it all worked. Well, it's working to make things better. So thank you for that. And one more thing I want to thank you guys that popped in yesterday. I received a notification yesterday morning that we, I say we because it's all of us, were nominated in two categories from for 2018 from the Sewing Blab. We won both categories thanks to you guys and your votes. It was uh, the best educational blogger vlogger. Vlogging is what we're doing here, if you didn't figure that out. And the other one was the best Facebook group, which we know we have the best group, thanks to you guys. And I told her that you guys have named yourselves the Wolfpack. So she said, actually, she's they're part of the Wolfpack, both of them. And you've seen them on here before. So thanks, guys. That was awesome. And thank you for voting. All right, guys. So I'm going to get going because I got a lot to share with you. Today, I'm bringing on Cindy from DIY Style. I met her a few weeks ago. She has these amazing mats. So before I bring her on, I'm just going to lift this up. Can you see me okay? All right. I'm going to be moving you around a lot today. So if you need your Dramamine, take your Dramamine. All right. Before I bring her up here, I'm just going to move these. Oops. I lost you for a sec. Here you go. All right. Without spilling my tea, you have got to see these mats. You see this thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, wait. Now, yes. The mats, these are magnets. And let me show you the back side. It's a full cork board. Okay, so this is big, and I didn't want to be all awkward and moving around while she is live on here. But this is a mat that I have not seen before. I know, I agree. So we're gonna talk about this. It's she is having these made in St. Louis. It's her and her daughter that have come up with this really cool idea. I'm 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 impressed, as you know, or I wouldn't have him on the show. <laughs> now, her daughter has the flu, so she's not going to be joining. She didn't get it from when she's in California, wins in Michigan, so we're good on that. <laughs> but these magnets drop. Watch this. Now, the boys thought this was the best tic-tac-toe ever. <laughs> and you know that they destroyed my studio. So I'm going to bring Cindy in. I want to hear about how what came up with the idea for this. We're going to meet Cindy, and then I'm going to give you some tips for sewing with velvet. Thus, the dress form is behind me. I have some new fabric for you. So I see you all. Hello, everyone. I will pop back later and bring you up individually, but I wanted to give you that shout out so you know what the plan is for the day. At the end of the day, the giveaway from last week, I closed, I closed the contest, but I have a yo-yo and a daylight travel light to give away. We have a fabulous discount for this mat. And other than that, let's get rolling. So let me bring up Cindy here. Hold on one moment. Hello and welcome, Cindy. Hi, how is everybody? Good. Everyone give Cindy a, a great welcome. You know my little heart emojis. <laughs> so Cindy 
and her daughter. Yeah. What is your daughter's name again? Elise. Elise. Elise, yes. They have DIY style. They have a great website, which I will be bringing up in a minute. But I wanted to bring Cindy on because I ran into her in Novi. By the way, we match. Oh, my gosh. I got the memo. <laughs> great mind. <mine>. Cool. <laughs> there you go. I didn't even pay attention to that before. Okay, We're awesome. in the, you know, blue is a great color for holidays, and we are right on it. I can't yeah. wear red because all my red tops are around here because I'm going to show them how to right. cut velvet on these mats and also how cool. to sew. So, Neat. anyways, you look great. So, thank you for yeah. coming on the show. People Thanks are so excited me. to meet you. Yeah. So, give well, me a little background. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we've had DIY style, you know, for years. So a few people may know us, you know, from several years ago with patterns and all kinds of things. Um, but we also took a step kind of to the side and worked in the swimsuit world. So Elise is a designer and she worked a lot in swimsuits. So she ended up moving to California um, and was working in the pageant kind of competition world and was even a sponsor for Miss California USA. So that's kind of what led her to California, but also led us to the invention of this whole mat system. Oh, wow. Well, okay. So by the way, I'm watching a lot of comments roll up through here. One of the things, uh, and this, we'll go back to the mats for a minute, sure, but swim, sure. swimwear is, uh, for me, it's the only thing I don't make because I just go buy it so quickly, but it's the most expensive. And if you could make it Correct. yourself, you could customize it, I mean, with so many different things. Whatever got her into swimwear? Well, like I said, she, she's a designer. She went to the school for design, um, Stevens College here in the area. And she kind of just fell into that niche. I think it was something she was really good at. She loved you know, um, that kind of Miss USA competition world. And she had a lot of contacts in that from competing herself as a teen. So before she knew it, she kind of was really, you know, pulled into this whole world of competition swimwear. Um, and the whole stretch knits we'd worked on were in that area quite a while, you know, with DIY style. Um, people like to sew knits or wear knits, but now didn't always know how to sew them. So we kind of Kept gravitating towards that so no surprise she landed in swimwear and you know became that kind of expert negative ease as well as you know dressing bodies because now you're in a competition world with swimsuits so probably the, the most upper echelon of women being picky you know of how they're yeah. going to look so Definitely. so you know we all learned a lot you know as we were doing that um, and she you know designs everything so she's a pattern maker um, and we did a lot of our own samples. So, again, that's kind of what kept leading us towards this whole math system. Right. Yeah. Okay, so tell us how. I just gave a quick, like, I lifted it up yeah. because I didn't want to be awkward while you're on there and lift it up. But right. tell them the specifics of this mat because I, sure. when you first showed it to me, I was amazed. And then when I came back to the studio and I was using it, I thought, this thing is cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's one of those things that I've been in the home sewing business my whole life. Um, you know, I've always tried to figure out the easier ways, you know, like everybody does, shortcuts and what have you. Um, so as we were working in Elise King Swim, which is Elise's swimwear line, anytime we could, you know, find a shortcut, you know, for being able to produce something, you know, we did. You know, we, we eliminated pins most of the time and used clips, you know, for sewing and just things like that. Um, however, you know, time is money, you know, when you're working in any kind of a, a custom and ready to wear business. So we were having to learn faster ways, you know, to cut. Um, so the whole, whole mat using rotary cutters, of course, um, because it's a lot more accurate. Um, if people aren't already using a, a rotary cutter, they definitely need to start working with one because I'm gonna find I'm gonna pause you for one here. second on that yeah I can see I can I can see into the homes of the entire wolf pack like we all want to save time <laughs> we wanted to Correct. save time sewing and exactly. to make things more precise and many of them we've talked about this before use scissors or a rotary cutter depending on the application but rotary cutter you can cut through layers. You can cut through yes. anything precisely without having any skewing going on. And exactly. I even pulled out a 
I pulled out my new Kai scissors one today just yeah. to demo it. But um, so I'm just had to say that because I can see oh, them yeah. all saying, yes, tell us how to save more time. <laughs> right. Well, and you know, like I said, you know, time is money. So that was that was our world uh, of what we were working in. And um, again, accuracy, just like you had mentioned, you know, when you're working with a stretch knit, especially swimwear in the negative situation, every eighth of an inch is a huge deal you know, in your accuracy of cutting, transitioning into your sewing of your garment. So anyway, um, what ended up happening throughout all of it, you know, we were kind of using our own versions of pattern weights, like every remote rotary cutting, and came down to we had a large order for Miss California USA. And um, Elise had sponsorship of Miss, you know, for their stage suits. So California is one of the larger states for girls competing. So that meant like about 60 swimsuits that we had to provide. Um, unfortunately, we took the order in November and cut at the, what's called the cutter, you know, in LA. And that meant we had to hand cut 60 swimsuits. This is November. And mind you, these girls are on stage in the beginning of January. So wow. I had to make sure they got cut in two weeks to get to our seamstresses to get on stage. So as you can imagine, that was quite the debacle <laughs> and oh, yeah. literally, yeah, I can still remember standing in the studio practically in tears going, I just don't know how we're going to do this, you know, so it was a big, you know, big deal. Anyway, um, you know, the, then things just kind of kept happening. You know, we, we, and he square to help. I'm going to pause you for one sec, sure. Cindy. I see yeah. some, if you could talk just a little bit louder and you guys, I see Cindy's a little bit muffled, but, um, it, it could okay. be the internet connection. So what I'll do is when she says something, I can repeat it a little bit. If it's something, some of it, some of them thought you said embroidery scissors. No, we were talking about rotary cutter. Oh. <laughs> so when no, she says something, cut. I can okay. repeat this. And after the show, if you turn up the volume, you can hear her a little bit more. So if you could just talk a smidge louder, that would be great. Yeah, I can talk louder. I can actually turn up my headset, too, if it's down too low. I wonder if it's down too low. Um, anyway, so we ended up using a T-square, and things just kind of kept coming from there. So so kind of go back to how you straighten the pattern. You're usually using a, a tape measure and trying to make sure you know everything's lined up on grain. Well, when you're doing many items and you're having to line many of them up, you know, in our, our case, it was a lot of swimsuit pieces. Um, that gets pretty time consuming and it's not very accurate either. I mean, you can be accurate as much as you can, but when you're not being able to pin into your fabric, because our fabrics you couldn't pin into, you had to actually use some kind of a weight or you could mess up the actual fabric itself um, with a pull or what have you. Anyway, um, starter and that, you know, helped increase our speed, you know, for lining pattern pieces up. And then um, we ended up with the whole mat system. Actually, it was my dad who came to the rescue. Um, he had been kind of seeing the whole whole thing unfold and came up with the whole idea of using the magnets and the T-square and this whole system together. So I'm going so. to, I'm going to just stop for a second and show everyone. Sure. So this yeah. is for you guys to see what she's talking about. She's talking about a T-ruler. Do you see this? And do you see these magnets popping up, up up here? These are magnets. Let's see if I can make sure I got this in the right place. I can never tell. You guys give me a heads up and tell me you can see this. So here are the magnets. Yeah. They just kind of move around. And this is the T-square. And what she was saying is this will lay on the mat. And you can see how the, to line up the grain line, you could see how this, you can line it up all the way this way or along this way. You have the lines. You have the 45-degree angle. Everything to be able to line this up. And guess what? These magnets hold this ruler. Can you guys, if you can imagine, this is pulling this. Look what happens when I drop it. It's pulling it right in place. There's little holes here for the right. magnets. And then you can use these magnets to hold your fabric down. So that's what she's talking about. And I know I can see a few more comments that uh, part of this is a little fuzzy. So sorry, guys. But just listen sure. along and I'll post photos later. So, all right, right. Cindy, so, so tell, if your dad came to the rescue on this, what did he do to make this so fabulous? Well, he, he kept making different prototypes. It literally started with the whole magnet idea. I mean, like I said, we, we had the, the, a T-square. He's a, a draftsman engineer, so that's where the T-square basically came from in the beginning. 
Um, but obviously what we've got now is a whole different rendition of the idea. Um, but it just kind of kept developing as we were working on it. But when we came down to be able to use those magnets instead of pins or anything else, you know, kind of um, fabric weights, if you will, um, to hold the patterns in place, that's when the light bulbs really started going off. And that's how we ended up with the T-square ruler coupled with those magnets and having the holes in the T-square ruler because now we had a ruler that can be moved around independent you know, of those magnets, which you need, you know, to be able to straighten your pattern pieces and things. Right. But then there are times when you want to hold that ruler down and cut strips, for instance. So you can put two or three of the magnets in. You can put a couple in. If you have a really lofty fabric, you can put a whole bunch in. But anyway, like I so said, that, that was the whole, whole start of this. We actually used the whole system in our studio, I want to say, probably about four or five years before one day I'm like, okay, this is silly. Nobody in the home sewing market has anything that's even close to this. And it had, had cut our time. And, and to kind of go back to the story for the Miss California USA, that's what saved us. You know, we were able to cut all those swimsuits, get them all bagged, get them to the seamstresses, and get them sewn, and, you know, out to the patch in time. So um, yeah. the system is what made it happen. So you have a few comments. Celeste says just having the magnets sure. hang to the mat is is incredible. I totally agree. Kay says this is amazing. Um, and then there are some comments and questions on size. Some people say here this would be sure. awesome for quilting. Absolutely anything with fabric. <laughs> I'm thinking for exactly. me particularly, um, my tops are going to be, I can put layers. And that's how I usually do layers. And people have watched me on my monstrous table back there. And I've got these huge uh Weights, I break nails, <laughs> cash on my hands. This is going to be so fast. So Melody on here somewhere had asked about what size. Uh, Amy wants to know what size. So if you could just talk a, a little bit about sure. that. Yeah. Well, this is our professional set. So our first set, you know, to the consumer, it's 24 inches by 36 inches. Um, we wanted it large enough, you know, to be able to be do some substantial, you know, work on. If you're a garment sewer, most likely you're going to want more than one mat, you know, to keep tiling things together. And I'll talk about that. Um, but that was also one of the most common sizes, you know, that we could see that people needed. So kind of in, in my sewing world, at least, you know, bigger is better. So I wanted to be able to, you know, offer something that would size. And okay, that, so uh, that ruler. So you're talking to. It's on the mat. You're talking to an entire group that says size matters. In fact, I don't have my size yeah. matters cup today because it's a Christmas <laughs> cup. But <laughs> yeah, okay. so it that's it goes the same for embroidery hoops. It goes the same for scissors. You name right. it. So, so right. um, that was one of the first things that I said. So for quilting, this would be fine. And for smaller, you know, uh, tops, it's fine. Bathing suits, it's fine. Even right. uh, shorts, skirts, everything like that. Right. But, what we what I had asked you is I said, what if I want to do a dress or some pants? It's going to be too short. And she said, well, tell us what you uh -oh, do. I'm losing you. You put a bunch together, didn't you? Oh, did I lose Cindy? Let's see. I'm going to bring Cindy down and refresh her. I lost her for a second. So what she said to this, and uh, Cindy, if you can hear me, refresh your screen and come back. I think her Internet's just a little off today. We all have those days, right? So this mat, what it is, is there's a magnet inside of it. You have the mat, on, which is a rotary cutting mat on one side, and on the other side is cork. So for me, what I've been using the cork side for is putting my fabrics and my samples together, tracing your patterns, anything like that is on the back side. So I wanted one that was a little bit longer. Okay, I see Cindy back, and she said just put a few together. So I'm bringing Cindy back on. Let's see. Hey, Cindy, there are you on there? Yeah. There you are. Yeah, Great. Okay. So I was just telling them that you put a couple of these together to do to work for longer garments. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, if I can, I'll scoot for a second just a little bit out of the frame. Um, I'll even scoot my chair over a little bit. You can see on our table, mine's our custom table is four foot wide by six foot long. And I have four mats tiled on here. Okay. So and if you can see... And maybe that's what you're going to show too. We've got two side by side, and I can flip, so I can use a cork side as well as the mat side. 
or turn them all over to Matt's side or turn them all over to Cork's side. Um, the nice thing about it is that the magnetism goes, you know, if you tile them, think of it like a carpet tile, you know, that fits side by side. It works the same way. You can just butt them right up next to each other. And that's what I have here. And you guys will see this um, after Cindy goes, I'm going to cut some velvet and I have two pushed together. And I had that wrong. You said 24 by 36. Sorry, guys. I was typing without my glasses. So it's 24 by 36. Yeah, yeah. And the, we specially designed the grid around the edge, too. These are printed um, edge to edge or like what they call bleed. So think of it like printing, you know, bleed off the edge and they cut. Um, but when we did the grid, one of the things that we've always, you know, kind of bothered us with mats is when you go to line them up, the measurements don't line up. So as long as you have all of these mats, you know, um, rotated in the, the same direction, your numbers are going to continually keep matching up. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to measure something and you're, you know, eyeing it and trying to, you know, find the seven, the seven, the seven or something, you can keep going across your whole mat. You know, I didn't even notice that. Head. I'm looking down yeah. now, and I see that. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It was just something that, you know, those are the little nuances that, you know, as you're, you know, putting together many maps, that it's like, okay, we got to fix this. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to bring my stuff. camera, bringing the camera down, guys, so you can see what she's talking about, because I did not even notice that until she just said that. So what she's saying is I have my two mats butted up. You can see. I don't have them, twi I have to twist them around so they both match, but yeah. these numbers would all match. And what she's saying is there's one inch in between, here's the two mats, and I'm measuring, just to double check your measurements, there yeah. <laughs> it's one inch, so you can keep measuring. Now that is a big deal because I have some inexpensive mats that I usually go through frequently because sure. they don't, they're not really good yeah, quality. Hold up. Yeah. And I tape them together, but there's no general measurement from one to the other. So this was brilliant. Right. Right. Well, we knew that people like us would want to keep tiling them together. And when you're trying to work on a large surface or a large item or whatever it is, you know, you, you're continually measuring down the line of something. So, so anyway, it was just something that, you know, a, a little thing that kind of turns into a big thing when you're, when you're really working. I love this. And the magnets all stick together and go in a nice little case too. Although yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't foresee um, that it, happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just make sure they don't walk away, right? Right. Um, no, when we did the magnets, um, that was a lot of testing um, because you can't just use, you know, any magnet. I mean, it's still, you can still use a magnet on the mat if you're going to, you know, it's still going to hold to the mat, but it's not going to hold your fabric to the mat. Right. So we had to go through a lot of testing to see what strength, what size. Um, and one of my little, like, pet peeves, you know, as we were doing this is, Anything that we had that we were prototyping or testing and gotten from somewhere else was too large. <clears throat> Excuse me. My, my voice was too large and would keep bumping into the rotary as you were cutting. So this is a specially designed low profile uh, magnet so that when you're cutting around, you know, the, you're getting close, you know, if you're holding the, your pattern piece in place, let's say, you know, your rotary cutter is not going to chunk into that <clears throat> that that magnet yeah so these are also, really tiny they're circular yeah, really tiny but really strong <laughs> but they are very strong yes yes they're really strong and they're what they call pulled the same so that's really important so when you go to finish like so we can move really fast because we've been doing this for quite some time but when you're done you know how long it takes to, to even pick up your pattern weights and slide them to the side or take out your pins. In this case, when you're done cutting, you can just click, 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 click. Oh, I think I lost Cindy again. I'll have her refresh. So I see, if you could see me guys, I'm just, um, I'm gonna pause for one sec, make sure we're not losing our, nope, we're good. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have Cindy come back up, but I wanna show you guys how to cut velvet on this. And what I'm gonna do is there is a link that um, I will be posting, if you're in the group, I'm going to just post it right here. Here's the link. I tried to shorten it so you could get to it. This is the link to her mat. And if she comes back in, I'll have her talk about it. But she's going to offer a discount to everyone. I put it in the group today to let you know about that. And 
Um, she's also giving a few specials. I think she's back. Let's see. And then we're going to cut velvet on this. So Cindy, you are back. Okay. Yay, so, okay. <laughs> we're so losing before, our connection or something. Yeah. So before I lose you again, two quick things. Sure. What do you do on the backside? Um, give up. I mean, I do tracing for the backside right, that has the right. cork, but do you have any other suggestions what? for what they could use that for? I'm losing my headphone. Yes. Actually, um, you know, if, if, if anybody does any pattern making, duplicating garments, that's what your cork side is for. Um, typically, if you're ever in a fashion design studio, you're going to see cork top tables. You know, there's a reason for that. And most of the time, it means that they're, you know, working on multiple layers of patterns and they're tracing and using push pins to hold things in place so they don't move. Um, right. So we have our own, like our, my whole table behind me actually is a cork top table, but now I've got my mats on top now since we've got this whole, whole new system. Um, but ours is kind of like dual duty now. So now you've got the mat side, of course, you're cutting on that side. Anytime you need to do any kind of pattern making or tracing of a garment, um, a rub off, you know, they, they, can call, they call it that. Um, you can use not only the magnets, because you can hold your pattern pieces, your paper, your garment, you know, in place. You can also use push pins when you need to, because sometimes you need a pivot point or a specific mark. Um, we've got just a little short video on that if they go to um, the site where the um, your link is so that they Here can is. see that little video I brought up, because of how that works. I brought up her website for you guys. There's a yeah. video. There's things for this. So originally she was going to offer um, my group, all of you guys out there, um, a coupon code, but we thought it would be easier. She just discounted the price until Christmas. So right. the, the price is discounted, but... She has a couple of extra things just for yeah. all of you. And go, you have to put Angela Wolf in the comments after you check out and go ahead and tell them what you're giving them. Yeah, so if you make sure you put Angela Wolf in the comments and you will get an extra set of magnets. The set comes with 12 and this is going to be an extra 12. So you'll have 24 total. Okay, and that's, that's awesome. for Angela Wolf viewers. Perfect. So what she said, in case you guys missed it, I know some of you said, um, do metal pins attach to the mat or, okay, I got a few questions for you while um, I'm going to bring these sure. up. But what she said was, if you put Angela Wolf, she's discounted the price. You don't need a code for that. But you do need to put Angela Wolf in there. And then you get a package of free magnets and free shipping. And free shipping is a big deal because this sucker doesn't just roll up. <laughs> this yeah. is like a big yeah. package that comes it, it to your door. It has to stay flat. Yeah. So um, just, you guys, throw your questions in here for Cindy before I start sure. um, working on the velvet. But Kay wants to know, do metal pins stick to the mat? Do metal pin, no, metal pins do not stick to the mat. That's a good question. I guess I never, I wasn't even thinking about that. That's such a, yeah. you'd be all over, that's all you need is metal pins on your um, Right, cutter, right, right. <laughs> no, I mean, th there's a, 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 you know, magnetic core, but it's not magnetized. What's magnetized is the magnet itself. Very, very good. Okay, that hope. Um, Leslie wants to know, oh, poor Leslie, I always feel, Hopefully it's a yes, because Leslie's always asking this, and she's one of the best sewing customers out there in Canada. Well, there's a whole handful of you, but do you ship to Canada? We are working on that right now. I literally have my UPS team on that, so I am hoping to have an answer to that literally within the next 24 hours. Um, oh, wonderful. We do well, not want to leave you guys out, so if we can figure out a way to, to do it that's cost-effective for everyone, I'm on it. And also a few other people. I know there's a ton of people on here that are from the Netherlands, uh, the UK, uh, basically all over the world. So is Canada first on your list and then you might add others? Canada or? is first on our list. Okay. Um, and then it seems like Australia, we've had a lot of people inquire about Australia. So I think once we get those, you know, kind of nailed down and figure out the whole duty, you know, situation and how that delivery works. Um, then we'll be open to international shipping. You know, we want we want these in the hands of sewers all over the world. Okay, awesome. So you guys, you have to be patient. Hopefully Canada's first. This is new. This is like very, very new to the market for home sewers. So um, when I saw what she had here, I'm like, okay, my group has to hear about this. Not, not everybody is going to be game for it, but Santa, I saw a ton of you say, is Santa listening? I don't know. I, we should have left him a message, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, I'll go ahead and add one little tidbit just to kind of 
keep people thinking along. This is the professional set, and this is what we call our base set. So okay. we have additional rulers that are coming that we have right now in prototype stage. Um, there is a 24-inch ruler coming there in addition to the 36. So the base set comes with the 36 and the 24-inch, um, or the 12 magnets um, and the 36-inch ruler. But we'll have additional pieces as we keep, keep moving on here. So, so they'll have their base mat and we'll have other things that they can get to work with that base mat. Okay, so they've got a lot of things coming out with the base. Yeah. And so here's a few more questions for you before I let you go. Do you need to be careful about having the magnets too close to their um, computerized sewing machine? There's always been discussion about that. So You know, that, that is something probably that's a question. I'm not familiar with the intricacies of, you know, currently of the computerized sewing machine. I don't think that it affects that. I've honestly even had magnets in my bag with my computer, not even knowing that they were there, and right. it never affected anything. Now, I'm not going to say just go ahead and you know stack them on there purposely, you yeah. know, but um, I, I would check with your dealer just to be sure. Um, That's a great suggestion. It's better safe, you know, than, but I, I, we've not ever had any issue that I'm aware of. And, you know, I have never had an issue. I mean, I'm... I'm no, um, I'm knocking on wood here, but I've never had yeah. an issue with using like the magnetic uh, seam. Uh, what do you call that thing? Right. To line up your seam. Right. There's always been right. comments about there, and I know that there have been people that have, but that was a lot of years. There I go with my great English for. It feels like a Friday today. That was quite a few years ago. <laughs> okay, I got I will say, as we were told that, um, and I'm not familiar with this completely, but that people with pacemakers aren't supposed to be around strong magnets. I imagine if you have a pacemaker, you already know that, but that's just the only other thing with magnets that we were Yeah, that's told. true. All right, so Amy wants to know, where do you put the code? There's no code, Amy. You, it's on sale, but af, when you check out in the comments, say yes. that you're part of the Wolf Pack or you watch this on Angela Wolf Facebook Live, right. and then you'll get the free magnets and the free shipping. So that's it when you're exactly. checking out. Okay, so uh, D Desiree... I love that name. <laughs> uh, wants to know if the mats are self-healing. Yes, I'm so glad she asked that. This is a special, high-quality, A-plus self-healing mat. Okay, guys. high-quality. Um, make sure you're using new blades, you know, a lot with your rotary cutters. We kind of have our own um, tips sheet, you know, that's included with your set when you get it. But that's key to really any you know, self-healing right. cutting mat. You need to use new blades often, just like you put a new sewing machine needle in your in your sewing machine. Okay, so Susan wants to know, and I you kind of answered a little bit about this because there's a video on your website, but she wants to know if there's special sure. instructions that come with this mat or suggestions on how to use it. We have some base information. We are getting ready to start doing all kinds of videos to show you extra things. Um, it's pretty simple, you know, once you get it, it's very easy to use. I, I don't even need to really give people specific instructions except for what we've got, you know, in our packing set. But watch our website, you know, we're going to be doing lots more videos, especially I think people have questions about how to use that pattern making side. Um, and we just actually got our first patent issued, you know, on this product. So oh, well, pretty exciting you, uh, you must be reading... You're reading Susan's mind. She said, I sure hope you patented this. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Well, I think it's a great, I this is a great idea. I sure thank you for coming on the show. I was so excited to see this, and I knew that some of the viewers would love this as well. And I really appreciate the, the discount that you're giving them. And this is through Christmas. Don't forget, put Angela Wolf. I will leave a link under the video for you guys. But I really wanted to just put a face with the product because it just always makes a difference. So, well, Cindy, thank you for coming us. on. I'm going to do a demo um, after you leave here today on cutting velvet since it's for the holidays. So, cool. Hopefully cool. I show your mats off well. Yeah, you will do fine, I'm sure. <laughs> well, have a Merry Christmas. Hi to your daughter. I hope she feels better. Yeah, and yeah. if I see any questions pop up here on Saturday when I read through the comments, I will be sure to shoot them your way Let if I can answer them. Let us know. Thanks, everybody. Merry Christmas. Everyone say thank you to Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye.
This is so cool. I'm so glad you guys were able to be here. And I'm so glad Cindy was able to come on. I do. Um, I'm so sorry that her daughter has the flu, though. And I trust me, I know what that feels like. So I'm going to cut some velvet and give you tips for velvet. If you have questions on this, uh, let me know. It's really new to the home sewing market. So uh, this is kind of a newbie, which is awesome. I love newbies. Speaking of newbies, look what I have. It arrived. My Angela Wolf thread cutters. I have a special for you guys on that. So you're gonna have to wait till next week about that. So let me, tips for sewing velvet. Last week on the show, I wore, hi Wynn. Hi, <laughs> Did you guys hear that voice? <clears throat> yes. We didn't talk about, everyone says they're hope you feel better. Mm, feel good. He has no voice, but he is, you look better. At least you have color in your face. And all of the group, that gave you tips when says thank you thank you thank you all right so this is the top i wore last week and i couldn't show it too close because i was wearing it but i read all your comments on saturday when i always sit down and read these so a few things you asked me what top is this this is the rouge t i pattern hacked it last year on the facebook live so the only thing i changed was i added slits it might have been two years ago actually I'll go through and find the blog post for you because that might have been on my old blog to give you uh, how to do that. So this is a stretch velvet. It has just a little bit of stretch. This is not a crushed velvet. So first I want to talk about velvet and I'm going, I have four pieces to show you and I'm purging my stash. So I put all four pieces on AngelaWolfPatterns.com for those of you that are dying to make one top. That's There wasn't a lot of yardage left, but I figure I've already made tops with these and I had two yards of one, three yards of one, and six yards of the other. So all yours. So what's the difference? Let me just talk about fabric and then I'm gonna show you how to cut it on this fabulous mat and let's get started. So this velvet, Christmas red, yes it is, I know. So it has a light stretch and you can see this is a real rich red. So what do you need to know about velvet? Well, first off, here I'll just put these magnets in place to hold this. I know, this is so fun. At, just ask Colin and Cody. They loved this thing. They were playing tic-tac-toe. So when your fabric is down, feel it. You'll feel that one way is the nap. I usually cut mine with the nap going down. You could do whatever you want to, but mine's going down. The stretch is going sideways. This one actually has a light four-way stretch. but So I cut with the grain line to grain line and with the... Um, the nap, the nap is what I'm thinking of. The nap is going down like that, all right? So the other thing you need to check for, let's look at this piece right here. This is, so by the way, I did have a couple yards of both of these and one is listed as, this is just a stretch red velvet. And this one you can see is a little orangier. And this is a crushed red velvet. What's the difference? This one looks like it's been crushed. So just take a look. Are you laughing? It does. Looks like you smashed it up. Again, I can feel that's the wrong way on the nap and that's the soft way. So I will cut my garment going that way. This has a real light stretch, not a lot. It actually stretches more going on the downside. But for me, I just wanted a little stretch to get around. So for the Rouge T, if you're used to using a real, real high stretch, you might not, um, you'll want to cut a size bigger. You could always take it in, but you want to cut a size bigger. Does that make sense? This is the fabric I'm actually going to cut, but this one's called the crushed red velvet. And I just saw somebody ask, you don't need a discount code. There's four pieces of velvet in the store and I already marked them on sale. And when they're gone, they're gone. I'm purging my stash. Wind's over here going, whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay. So let me move these magnets and I'm just gonna show you two more kinds of velvet for those of you that wanna get on the luxury side for the holidays. And you might actually, let me get my name off of there. Hold on, can you iron the seams as well? I'm gonna bring that up in just a second so I won't forget about that, all right? So here are two more pieces of velvet that you just have to see. And yes, I am getting rid of my stash and I'll tell you why. So this is for those 
that really want a luxurious velvet. This is silk velvet. Both of these pieces I'm going to show you is silk velvet. This piece I bought and I walk by and pet it and I decided I'm letting the petting pieces go because I can't decide what to make. So I thought, you know what? Since we're talking about velvet today, I will put it on the website and if somebody buys it, I would love to see your beautiful outfit of this because I know you'll do well with this. But here's the trick about this fabric. So this is a silk blend. It's really, really, really soft. The grain line and the salvages run this way. So you can see how it's pink and blue lines. Real pretty, right? It has a light stretch going sideways. It has a border along the whole thing. Let me bring this up close. This is what you call a silk burnout. So you can kind of see. I'll bring this down a little bit so you can see. There you go. How's this? Maybe? Too bright? There we go. This is all a burnout. Isn't that gorgeous? That's why I bought this. I just absolutely loved it. It's a rich purple blues. And then this is just velvet. So uh, the same tips I'm going to give you for sewing will be with this too. But this is for those of you that are going to go shopping to our favorite fabric stores. And you, so you see a silk velvet. And if you love a luxurious, this one's awesome. So this is a silk blend. It feels almost like fleece on the backside. That's all I could describe it as. It's absolutely beautiful. So this, they cost more too, because thus the silk word. So this one, you could come up with a really cool design. You, I think this one's like 60 yard wide. When you're looking for velvet at any store or online, check the width because some of them are real narrow. This one's pretty decent. This one's, I think 54. And then the border goes along the whole edge. So I'm just going to put that back up here. I know. It's my favorite colors, too. You'd think I would have come up with something. So how about this here? I'm going to bring you over here. Move my chair. I've got everything set up. I got my machine ready for you and everything. I forgot the plug-in cord, but other than that, we're doing good. This fabric, you've seen, this is the dress that you've seen on the runway. It's black. It's silver. This is a silk velvet burnout. This one, I actually have six yards left, and I decided I don't need to make another dress. I was going to make a jacket. I don't need it. I love, I live in the dress, though. You can't have the dress. <laughs> so this is actually see-through. I don't know if you can see me under here, but the back side is almost like a silver metallic. So this is a silk velvet burnout, and it has like a silver metallic, but it's not rough on the back side. This velvety part... If I bring this down here, you could make a really cute sweater or a shawl out of this. So let me just you can see the flowers. And if I go like this, I can feel the nap going that direction. If I go this way, it feels rough. So this definitely has a nap. Now, this fabric is not very wide. I think this one is only 40 inches wide or something like that. So you'd have to take that into consideration. Whatever you're using, regardless if it's this fabric or a different one, I just want to point that out because fabrics, when they're too skinny, you almost have to double the amount compared to like a 60 yard. As it also depends what size you're in. Oh, yeah, 60 inch. I got my pal over here <laughs> helping me out. Yeah, it's not 60 yards wide. <laughs> I can, I can see you all laughing. All right, so let's talk about silk. <laughs> <laughs> when I got 60 yards wide, that would be, people would be loving that stuff. <laughs> All right, so let me go back. Linda wants to know, uh, do you have to dry clean velvet? Velvet in general, like the silk velvets, I would suggest dry cleaning. But you all know me, and I usually wash and dry most of my garments. So you guys asked about this earlier. This is my Rachel, and this is a sweater. This was supposed to be a dry clean only, but I wash and dry it. It's been washed a million times. Not really, but you know what I mean. The black dress behind me, I would definitely dry clean. And I have dry cleaned it because I've worn it to my sister's wedding. I've worn it to a few places. It's been in a lot of fashion shows, stuff like that. Okay. The crushed velvet, the red, and that red, this top here, 
I have washed this and dried this many times. Now I wash in cold water and I dry with low heat. If you have, um, sometimes this top here, you can see the twisted collar on here. That was another thing I wanted to show you. When I'm throwing this in the wash, this fabric can get damaged really easily. And this will take me back to the pressing question as well. So first of all, you've seen those laundry bags? They're like mesh with a zipper. Of course, we could make one in three minutes, but you can buy one for like two bucks at Walgreens, which is what I usually opt to do. I throw these in that bag because what it does is it prevents, just say you had something with a zipper or maybe a sharp, um, you're not going to have sharp buttons, but maybe a button got too hot or something. It will melt your fabric. It will destroy your fabric. Or maybe when accidentally threw his jeans in with it, you know, something like that, that zipper can fray your fabric or scar it. Now, if you're using this crushed stretch velvet, which you can find this in a lot of places, guys. I um, have seen it at Joanne Fabrics. Vogue Fabrics has a whole bunch. Fabric Mart. Uh, prices vary. You know, it just depends. If you get it on sale, get your coupons out. But that one I throw in the wash and dryer. And I usually don't worry about it because this looks kind of like it was squashed anyway. So it doesn't matter. But to be safe with the velvet, you really want to wash it in a bag or by itself or with soft clothes. So like, I wouldn't suggest washing it with fleece though. If any of you have washed all of your fleece items with anything that has clingy, you know what I'm talking about. So just just use common sense on that. The dry cleaning works well for dresses. If you're going to this one here, I would probably cut off a little piece and wash and dry it to see what it looked like. It would probably shrink a little bit because it has silk in it. You know, the velvet can bring on a different texture as well. So, and if you dry it under too hot of heat, it can melt it. So that brings me all the way back. I see a whole bunch of questions rolling through, so don't worry, I'll answer all these. Um, about the pressing, who asked that? Way down here. Boy, you guys are very active today. Thank you, by the way. That makes me feel like I'm not sitting here hanging out all by myself. <laughs> okay, we'd love to make that top in purple. I agree. Hold on here. I'm going to find this question because it was a good one. Thanks, Arnell. Wes, you're right. Some of the some of the fabrics are more pricey if it's silk. I think um, those two, when I purchased them, were close to thirty dollars, maybe twenty nine dollars a yard, which is a lot for you know a dress. But silk velvet, you can spend quite a bit of money on that. The other ones, not so much. Maybe ten, fourteen dollars. 14, I think, is usually what I end up spending. I threw them on the website, though, for like 20. I think those two are 20, and these are 6 and 10, something like that. Okay, would love to see. <laughs> what did you say, Kay? I would love to see that sleeve. Which one with the long sleeve? Oh, this down a sleeve. Kay, that's a great idea. You know what? I was while I was trying to part with my fabric, you know, this is like an emotional thing. I've had this for a couple years. <laughs> I was thinking this would look awesome down a sleeve or down the Delilah or on this Rachel top here. Wouldn't that look cool right here? Oh, yeah, yeah. I agree, Kay. Great minds think alike. Well, I can't find the ironing comment, but I know it's in here. So what can you use to iron? Let's just say do not put your iron on top of this fabric. You will melt it. But those of you that have an iron shoe are going to be okay. The iron shoe is the metal part that goes on top, on the bottom of your iron. You've seen that before. And you can use that. But that being said, what I find is a safer route. And you can see I have my hem pressed up on here. I actually pulled out part of my stitching. I have to restitch this with the cover hem machine. But if you turn it up, I usually turn it up from the wrong side of the fabric, first of all, and I leave my iron about that far away from the fabric. I use a lot of steam and I use the tailor's clapper and I just hold that and it holds that hem right down. You really have no reason to press anything else on your garment. I mean, on that dress I did because I have the collar finished and things like that, but I pressed everything from the wrong side and do not let your iron touch that fabric. 
You can get away with it a little bit if you have the iron shoe, as I just mentioned. But other than that, don't do it. And if I see you walking down the street with triangles on your back, I'll know that you forgot. <laughs> just like I did with my fleece, right? So you have to think, this fabric has a nap. And depending on the weight, this one's a little heavier than this one. And some of those two are even lighter. The velvet is a lofty part of the fabric. So when you press that, it could just melt it. Now, there are a lot of cool things you can do to velvet. You can burn it out yourself by, uh, they have a, I can't even think of what it's called. I bought it at Joann's a long time ago. I'm sure that it's expired by now. But you draw on the fabric and it'll actually burn out the silk. It doesn't necessarily work with the polyester so well, but it works really good on the silks. So that's a cool thing. You can dye silks beautifully. Silk velvets to dye are to dye for. Uh, I haven't had good luck with the polyester side again, but the silk side, definitely. So if you come across a good deal on a silk velvet that's a solid color, just put your creative mind to use because there's a lot to do there. I agree. All right, so I see a few more questions and I'm gonna give you some tips for, hi Angie, great to see you. Thanks for voting yesterday, by the way. <laughs> uh, how about, I couldn't see about that. Amy, I saw you said something about a whole piece of that. <laughs> well, this one I would take a whole piece and I should use it for a blanket or something. That's what I should do for these pieces that I just pet, right? <laughs> Lita says this would be gorgeous as a dress. I agree. Do silk fabrics need to be dry cleaned? That was the question we already answered. And I'm gonna scroll up because I think I saw all of these. Oh, you asked about ironing sleeves. <laughs> there you go, Kay. <laughs> well, ironing sleeves is good. And then <laughs> ironing, <laughs> ironing sleeves or ironing seams. You really don't need to iron the seams on the knits. But on the regular fabric, you do press the seams. Usually you stitch them and press them to one side. That would be the same thing. You can use a press cloth. That does help. Although, Wes, did I see you burnt your pressing cloth last week? That I felt so bad for you. <laughs> I think we've all done that once or twice to make you feel better. But I was just curious what fabric you were using. Because I think you said you were using silk organza. So that must have been one hot iron. Yeah. But um, yes, I usually do press my seams like on that dress. From the inside, just be careful. Another thing you need to be careful of is on the seam. I could do a whole class on velvet because there's so many technical things. But I use a ham or a seam roll on the back side of the fabric. So if you look down here, pretend. Let's, well, actually, here, I'll just grab my knit top. Okay, so let's just pretend I would put my seam roll underneath here or my um, ham either one so this is not laying flat on the ironing board there's something underneath with some padding and then when I go to press I can give it a little steam here and use the clapper if you don't do that and this is on a flat surface you will end up with a shiny mark right over my deodorant marks from last week <laughs> you'll end up with a shiny mark where your seam is and it that's not so pretty. So that's a seam roll. Uh, we have one. I don't know, you go throw me a seam roll. I think they're, they might be in the back room somewhere. For those of you that don't know what one is. Or, and a ham. There goes when. Because <laughs> that really makes a difference. That was a great question, by the way. And I did finally get it, Kay. S sleeves, seam, I gotcha. And by the way, even if you didn't say that this would look good down sleeves, I think it would. <laughs> New ones. Do you have some already open? No, this would be good. I think I have some open maybe underneath the pressing table. I'll look. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So this is what they look like. He's going to try to find one out of the package. Those of you that haven't seen that. Yeah. And then here's the ham. See one? He's got it. I'm so organized. It's getting scary in here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here's the ham. This one is definitely well used. I use this for sleeves and things like that. The seam roll is a little bit narrower, so you can just, that's what, thus the seam roll. You put your seam down it, press, and then the, the fabric falls on either side and you're only pressing that seam or the area you're trying to press. Very simple. Yes, I do have these on the website. Oh gosh, 
I'll come up with a coupon code. What coupon code do you want? Why don't you just keep it at, what did we do before? Birthday, 2018. I'll just reactivate that till Christmas. How's that? Birthday, 2018. I'll have to look. Hold on a second. Somebody help me out. What? Because a ton of you ordered stuff during that time. Birthday, 2018. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. So those are on there if you need those. But anyways, you put that underneath the velvet. All right. Um, oh, hey, Liz. I can see part of your comment because it's it's a long one. But I saw that you were at the mill, the mill end. Is that the one that has all the North Face fleece? Because I love that store. Now, I do have a lot of fleece here. I'm not parting with that yet. I got to make my jackets first. But I saw the picture, and that fleece is amazing. There's Wes. So, Wes, you are using silk. That's crazy. That had to be one hot iron. In case you missed that, we were talking about pressing cloth. Um, Lita says she has iron velvet on, let's see, on rubber stamps. Yes, that's a great, thank you. That's another fun way that you can, when you iron rubber stamps. So it's, you're burning the velvet. Oh, Wes says he doesn't know what press cloth it was. Well, good thing. Hopefully, he didn't ruin anything. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Wes wants to know, does velvet leave fuzz everywhere? Well, we're almost out of time, so I want to make sure I can cut and give you some tips for sewing. So, I have some fabric here. And I'm going to lay this out. While I'm doing that, here are your tips for sewing. All right? I brought props for you just in case. We have talked about this a million times, depending on what machine you have. Now, the machine that I'm actually using right here, you don't care if I show you, Wendy, <laughs> is the PQ1500. You've seen me use this a million times. This is the one that just does straight stitch. Everyone's saying hi. That just does straight stitch. Uh, this is the older version. They have a newer one. And by the way, I put a link on my Amazon affiliate link for you guys because I found a great deal on it. I don't know if it's just for the holidays or something, but it's really inexpensive compared to what it normally is. It's from the brother site. So I'll find that link for you. Hold on a sec. All right. So that one comes with a walking foot. Now, last week, if you watched the Sewing News Live with Joanne, you saw another foot, and that is this one, the Move It foot. So these are not the same foot, but they can accomplish similar effects. Does that make sense? This is just a souped up version, but because this controls, your machine can control, I have the foot on there backwards. I thought, gosh, that looks so funny. I put the foot on backwards. This one has the belt on the bottom that you can control with your machine. So check your machine. You might actually have this and didn't even know what it was for. And then the traditional walking foot. You plug this into the machine and it walks your fabric. So you don't end up with one side shorter than the other. I will give you, um, hold on one sec. I will give you, um, there was something on this that I wanted to share with you. I'll think of it. Oh, for how to hold your fabric. There's another tip for holding your fabric. But this is the walking foot. Those two, if you have those with your machine, grab them because they really make a big difference when you're working with anything like this. Corduroy. We're in corduroy season, aren't we? Velvet, all that stuff. All right. So I'm just going to click on here. Hold on one moment. We are taking a brief break for one second. Here you go. I know some of you asked about this, so I'm going to put it up right now. There you go. While I'm showing, that's the Amazon page. I found four or five really good machines for those of you that don't live close to a dealer that, you know, we've talked about dealers, you get really good support and good quality machines, but you can also get good quality machines at other places if you can't afford the other ones, or you don't have a dealer next to you and you go shopping. All right, so here's the move it foot and here's the walking foot. On the PQ1500, there is this little contraption, and I'm going to bring you right over here. Wind's like, I'm getting out of here. Ooh, let me get my cord up there. I'm stuck. All right, guys. Can you see? Okay. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Say, yes, I can see. 
and I'm going to be sewing velvet. <laughs> okay. This machine here only does straight stitch. It has a narrow, this is, I call this my commercial machine. That's really not a commercial machine, but it could be. This is an attachment that comes on it. Can you see this? This, you. I have a full blog post and a video showing you how to use this. I've used this with faux fur and lining. This is a fabric separator. So can you see that up close? So when this goes on the machine, it goes on right like this. This can open or close. Make sure I can, you guys can see or close. And then the fabric runs through it, right through this hole, each layer. So let me just put, show you how this works. Make sure that you guys can see there. Rolling up the comments to make sure. Yes, you can see. Okay, good, good. Now check your machine because if you have this machine, you'll have this in there. You know, our machines come with so many things that most of us never use. Let me make sure I'm putting this on right. Okay, so I don't have a screwdriver, so you're going to have to just use your imagination here. These little itty bitty screws go in here. Hold that thought for a minute. <laughs> okay, they're kind of screwed in, kind of. The screw's in there. Now, you don't have to remove this because this slides right out of the way while you're sewing. So can you guys see that? You give me a little more room there, Wynn, please. I'm, I'm stuck. Okay, great. So here's this. And this would be screwed in a lot tighter. I think it still keeps dropping for some reason. Just hold it for one sec. Thank you. And then this closes. Just like that. And this opening will go... Well, actually, I, I gave you guys the wrong information at first. This opening goes right where your foot goes, so you can stitch through that. So you have one layer of fabric underneath and one layer on top. Does that make sense? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense very much. No, I get it. Okay, so you have one layer underneath and one layer on top, and that's what you call the fabric separator. The other thing on this particular machine is you have a pin feed right here. So I can turn this to the left. It looks like it's the pink one. You see a little pin sticking up there? So if you have this machine, you probably didn't even know you had that part on it, and that will help, number one, separate your fabric as it goes through, and it keeps, if you ever get to the end and your fabrics are uneven, that's why. Okay? All right, so what about holding your fabric when you're stitching? This fabric, I'm always holding the ends like this. I'll just pretend this is a seam. I'm always holding the fabric like this, using my bottom fabric. To, so I know that at the end, they're both going to be the same. I'm not stretching the fabric. I'm just holding them. Okay, and two more tips before I cut. I use these. These are get-a-grip clips. I met him when I taped Craftsy. He's great. And then I also have a whole bunch of these little clips. Wonder clips, I think they're called. And this holds the fabric without puncturing. I don't have to worry about pins getting in it. But be careful that you don't have clips that are like some weird, that are too tight or have anything sharp in there because you'll mess up your fabric. But that's how I hold my seams. Does that make sense? Okay. I just saw Peg ask. Okay, so I'm getting ready to um, roll this down. First off, Peg wants to know, <laughs> Melody, are you Konya Cotton? <laughs> I love that. If you are, I didn't even know. But she is in Florida. <laughs> and happy birthday, Jeannie. Whoever's birthday it is, happy birthday. Happy birthday to everyone in December, by the way. I try to remember every month to remember y'all's birthdays. So, all right. Let's talk about cutting this fabulous fabric. And then we're going to be out of time. And what I might do is I'm going to be cutting something out tomorrow. So... I'll pop back in live sometime in the group tomorrow and chat with you and answer your questions. So, all right, let's bring this back down here. You guys see okay? I know red is not the best color to have up here, but it's all I got right now. Everyone's saying I have to check my foot box. So when I'm working on crushed velvet, 
So the mat's going, the nap is going this way. And I have a huge piece of fabric here, so I'm just going to try to do a small demo because you can't get the whole thing on camera. You see all these? This is awesome. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to scrunch this up at one end so you can see. Now, I have that all that fabric scrunched up right here, which I'm not going to be cutting. You see all that right here? But I'm able to see down here, if I wanted to line up the grain line, I could line. I would line it up this way. Either way, it holds the fabric in place, but it also can line up your cross grain or your grain line, whatever you're doing. All right, so I'm going to move the mat for a second and just, I have a pattern here. This is my very, very aged, very aged sloper. Looks like, oh my gosh, I thought it was a worm. <laughs> it's a piece of fabric. All right, so I'm going to use these magnets just to hold the fabric down. If you've ever worked with this fabric, you know it's a little bit of a nightmare. All right. Now, when I cut this top out for real, I'm going to be using both of these mats. But you can see the idea. So this holds the fabric. It's not stretching or anything like that. If I decide I want to find the, the true grain line, I've lined the salvage up here on the edge right here. And I could move this over. Like, I've got too much stuff on my table. So you can see the idea. This will just hold in place. I'm going to get this out of the way for now, though, and just show you how I cut my velvet. So the nap's going down. Here is my very old pathetic sloper. And I only cut one layer. So what do you do with a whole half a piece like this? Bring this up here. Oh my gosh, these are fantastic. This is a thick, this is thick cardboard actually. And this is my rendition of if I want a short top, I fold this up. And if I want a long top, I leave it down. This is just going to be a tank top. All right. And let's come up here. You guys see okay? Say yes. I can see great. So this is where the fold line is going to be. And I do still use my scissors. And if you saw me talk about this last week, these are those serrated scissors that I get Hey guys, did, did I just lose you for a sec? Sorry, okay, I'll bring you back down here. I've, sometimes when this camera goes too sharp one direction, it decides to have a moment. It did it again, sorry. Okay, so <laughs> my camera only likes to look up. So I'm gonna borrow Win. Can I borrow you, Win? Mm -hmm. like <laughs> Come on this back side. Okay, Look, angle down. You can see up there what it looks like, but I just want you to angle down like right here. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so no, I'm not using these scissors on the mat, by the way. I can see that. These are Kai scissors, and these are serrated. So when I'm trying to mark certain things, notches and stuff, I will use the serrated. And you can see how it pulls the fabric. It's awesome. So these are awesome. These are serrated. And this is a giveaway that I'm going to be announcing here in a moment. So here is my rotary cutter, and basically, look at this. This is called one-handed. So you can imagine if you had layers and layers and layers. I better not cut too much. I think I put two yards on the website, and I need some of this for my top. <laughs> okay, so you saw how fast that was? There is a little bit of fuzz on there. And I'm just going to lift these up. Now, I'm not going to cut the other side because the fabric's not all laid out. But what I would do then is flip this over like this. Okay, this could be a really fun 
This could make cutting actually quite fun. Perfect. All right. You can bring me back now in. Okay, guys, what did you think of that? So I, what I'm going to do is put together a video that's a little bit more detailed. I know that Facebook kind of, this Facebook Live sometimes is not quite as like sharp on the video. It's 720 versus 1080, so it's a different size. But let me just show this to you. Look, this came right apart like this. Very easy. Just make sure you have a new blade on your cutter, and you can see I have a little bit of fuzz on there. Super simple. If you're going to make a top, you can make a top really fast. I actually am having ideas right now because I've only used the mat for about 30 seconds before I saw this. I just got these, and I just had to see how this works. There's no scuff marks from my rotary cutter. You saw how quickly that happened. But I'm thinking I could cut a couple tops at the same time because exactly what she said, if you need to cut a whole pile of things, you know what happens. The fabric moves. These things are pretty strong. I'll give you feedback, but so far I give it an A plus. And when I tested it at, in Novi, that's when I kind of, when she showed me what she had, I thought, I got to see this. And I think that uh, sewing fans all over are going to love this. All right. So what questions do you have on the velvet? I can't wait to see your velvet tops, by the way. And while I'm doing that, because we are running out of time, this is the giveaway. I'll be giving this away, not next week. Uh, let's see. I better get the date right. Hold on. Let me look at the calendar while you're looking at these fabulous things. Kai Scissors gift package. This is the serrated gift set, if you didn't know that. Awesome. Yes, I know, guys, my international friends. I love you, but I can't. This is USA only just because of the shipping charges. But I always tell my international friends you can still enter because if I draw your name, I will give you a digital pattern or something like that that doesn't require shipping. Or you could offer to pay shipping charges. That's fine, too. But sometimes it's ridiculous. I wish it was just free all the time. All right. So here's the date. This is the date for this drawing. Uh, today is the 12th. So this will be, oh gosh, we're almost to Christmas. I think we're going to be drawing this next Friday on the 21st, right before Christmas. All right. So I will have the link up tomorrow morning and I will leave a note here for you so you can sign up. And I have more. Hold on. I have the winners from last week that I need to announce. And Janet, I just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been putting so much stuff in this thing. I love this. <laughs> if you didn't see, um, you guys are rolling in the Christmas gifts. I just love it. Thank you. You guys are also special. But if you didn't see this, this, Wynn loved this. So this is what Janet sent over. When you are the wolf pack. I'm the leader of the wolf pack. Yeah. You guys are the best. <laughs> so I will go back through and check your comments, by the way, for Velvet, because we're kind of out of time. I see a ton of you rolled in after, so you can always hit replay on the show, watch from the beginning. I hope you don't get sick. Drink lots of tea. And let me find those winners here. Where are you? Here we are. Okay. The winners from last week. We have the yo-yo light. And we have one travel light from Daylight. I don't know which one they're giving you. They have two. So this one has the magnifier. I take this in my purse. I never leave home without it. You can see through it. You can paint your nails with it. I usually use it to paint my nails. But I also use it for reading on the airplane because it sets right on your table. And it's a perfect light. And everyone's always looking at you like, that's so cool. And then the other thing is this sits in the back seat on the airplane. And this can go whatever angle you want. This is my all-time favorite. So, all right, so the winners are, drum roll, if I don't hang up on you, hold on, let's see, the Daylight Travel Light from the week before, because remember we gave away four, in case you missed the announcement, because I haven't heard back from her, was Nancy Moore from St. Louis, okay, that was one of the Daylight Travel Lights. There was also a winner on Instagram, which I announced uh, last week, and I don't think I have her here. I haven't heard back from her either. So I'm going to send two messages. If I don't hear back from them by Christmas, I'll draw two more names. All right. So the winners from last week, Susan Nation from Prairie Vi Village, Kansas. Congratulations. You won a travel light. 
And I will, as soon as I get your information, send me a message with your address. And the other winner for the yo-yo light, my fave, is Nancy Lake from Phoenix. Congratulations, Nancy. Very, very fun. So the last couple of things before I let you go, I hope you guys have a fabulous week. I will be popping into the group sometime tomorrow because I'm going to be sewing my velvet. I'll ask, answer your questions. Don't forget that Joe, with his giveaway, the discount for the dress forms is until Christmas. But if you want the special free gift, you have to order by Friday. See what else. The giveaway for this week, I will have up tomorrow, the Kai Scissors. If you have any question finding any of the links I sent you, let me know because I will post it. But there was one more thing I thought would have been beneficial for you. Hmm. Oh, yes. Hashtag Thrifty Thursday. So my friend Laura Pfeiffer, which you might have seen, she's a brand ambassador for Brothers. She was on our Soy News Live. We are doing something new every Thursday called Thrifty Thursday. So each month we're going to each pick a garment. This month we're choosing sweaters. And every Thursday on Instagram and Facebook, we're going to share photos of what we choose for one week. We might ask for your input of what you want us to do to it. And then we'll show you the process along and give you a full blog post so you can understand how we did it. You can follow along. And at the end of the month, we'll show you the final product. So tomorrow, Thrifty Thursday, we're going to show you the sweaters that we found either at a thrift store or in Wynn's closet. <laughs> Make sure he's not here for that show. All right, you guys. Have a great week. I hope um, none of you catch the flu. And I will see you next week. Next week is the last week before Christmas, unless I see you tomorrow in the group. So take care, you guys. Talk to you soon. Merry almost Christmas.